Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit and today we are discussing Jackson Cross Cylinder, also called the Cross Cylinder. The JCC or the Jackson Cross Cylinder is a method of subjective verification of refraction. It is actually a spherical cylinder or we can say a sphero cylinder combination in which the spherical component is actually half of the cylindrical component and it is of opposite sign. The cross cylinder will be identified, however, by the strength of the cylindrical component. The CC or the Jackson cross cylinder consists of an instrument shown over here, which has a circular structure like this with a handle. The handle is usually present at an angle of 45 degrees to the, to the meridians which are marked on the JCC. As I already told you that the JCC is a spiro cylindrical combination. That means it has a spherical component and a cylindrical component and the sphere is half of the cylinder component with a sign opposite to that of the cylindrical component. Now have a look at this type of JCC. Over here we can see the red color markings okay and these red color marking indicates the axis of the minus cylinder of the JCC that means about minus 0.5 and over here we can see plus 0 0.50 written in the vertical axis right that means this is the axis of the plus 0.5 cylinder and therefore the power will be acting where the power will be acting horizontal. If you would remember uh, from the video on astigmatism, in a case of cylinder, the axis and power of the cylinder are perpendicular to each other. And if the axis is at 180, the power will be at 90 degree and vice versa. So similarly in this JCC, since the red color markings or the negative cylinder is written on the, along the horizontal meridian, the power is acting along the vertical meridian. So in a JCC, we can also define JCC as a combination of two cylinders which are of equal power but of different sign acting at perpendicular to each other. Okay, so the first question is, do you think this JCC can be represented in two forms? Yes. This JCC of plus 0 0.50 can be written as a power cross like this. That is a combination of two cylinders or it can also be written in a spiro cylindrical form that is a prescription form as shown over here. That is minus 0 0.50 diopter spherical derived from here and writing the extra cylinder that is minus one cylinder into 180 degrees. So both these representations are correct for the JCC. In a JCC, the handle of the JCC will always be at an angle of 45 degrees to the meridians which are marked. The minus marking will indicate the axis of the minus cylinder and the white dots will indicate the axis of the plus cylinder. Jackson cross cylinder can be used in order to discover the astigmatism that means if astigmatism is present or not. Second, if we know that the astigmatism is present in the prescription, we can actually check the axis of the cylinder or we can refine the axis of the cylinder that we, uh, that we found out initially. And the third thing is we can also check or refine the power of that cylinder in the prescription, right? So in order to discover the astigmatism, in order to refine the axis of the astigmatism and finally to check the power of the cylinder in that astigmatism. These three things we can use JCC. Before I go and explain you how do we do those three applications of JCC, I want you to be thorough again with the Sturm's conoid. I cannot stress enough the importance of Sturm's conoid in refraction. So if you are not seen my video on Sturm's conoid, you can find it in the link and you can actually, I would suggest that you go visit and clear your concepts on the Sturm's conoid. In Sturm's conoid, we saw that if this was the toric surface, the convergence of the vertical meridian which is having more power say compared to the horizontal meridian actually gave us a horizontal line right and the convergence of the horizontal meridian or the horizontal rays of light which were having less power gave us a vertical line and these two were called our anterior focal plane and the posterior focal plane and in between them what we had was a circle of least confusion. So the whole idea of refraction is to bring this circle of least confusion onto the retina and in the process to collapse the Sturm's conoid. That means to bring the horizontal line onto the vertical line. 
But what happens in refraction is whenever we are introducing the lenses in front of the storic surface, we are trying to bring this anterior focal line and the posterior focal line close to each other, right? So the anterior focal line and posterior focal line, when they come close to each other, what is happening? The storms of con the storms conoid is actually come becoming shorter and shorter, right? But Sometimes we might introduce the wrong lenses and then what will happen the anterior focal line and the posterior focal line will actually move away from each other and the sterms interval will actually increase and the patient will see blur vision. So that's the basic concept behind the JCC. Now let us try to understand this in detail. Suppose in front of this eye we will introduce a JCC. Now this eye as we can see there is a horizontal image which is formed and this horizontal image is actually formed from the vertical meridian and a vertical image which is formed which is formed from the horizontal meridian right and the circle of least confusion is actually present onto the retina. Now this is our JCC and we can see that the negative, uh, negative axis or the red axis over here indicates the axis of the negative part of the cylinder. Okay, and if the axis is marked like this, where will the power of the negative cylinder act? It will act along the horizontal meridian, right? That is, we are actually giving this about minus 0.25 diopters along the horizontal meridian. The horizontal meridian is forming which image? It is forming the vertical image. So what will be the effect of giving minus power to this, hor to this horizontal meridian? The image will actually shift behind okay the image will shift behind right so whenever we are giving minus power we are making the eye weaker so the image will shift behind now what will be the effect of giving a plus power to the vertical meridian this image will shift even more further right so when we are giving plus we are increasing the convergence so the image will move forward so what is happening when we are putting a cylinder when we are giving the jcc to this eye both the images are actually moving away from each other and the storm's conoid is actually expanding, right? So the patient will not be happy with the prescription or with the JCC on in this position, right? However, what is happening to the circle of least confusion? Nothing. Circle of least confusion is remaining as it is on to the retina. So that's the amazing thing about JCC that it will actually shift the two anterior focal plane and the posterior focal planes, right? So relatively, there will be a shift in their position. However, the circle of least confusion will always remain on to the retina. Now let us see what will happen if we actually flip this JCC into this new position. Now as you can see that the meridians will totally change. What do we have at the vertical meridian now? We are actually having the axis of 0.25 cylinder. If the axis of the 0.25 cylinder is on the vertical, what does it mean? Where is the power? The power is along the horizontal and therefore the minus cylinder is acting on the vertical right so is this clear yeah so now let us see that what uh, what will happen when we put this jcc in front of this eye so this image initially is actually formed from the vertical meridian and along the vertical meridian what are we giving we are giving a minus power along the vertical meridian a minus power will always shift the image behind right so this image will now be folk will be shifted in a backward direction right that means towards the retina now what will happen if we are giving this plus 0.25 along the horizontal meridian? Where is the horizontal Im meridian image? The image is this one, right? So now we are giving a plus 0.25 to the horizontal meridian image. So because whenever we give plus, the image will move forward. So what will in turn happen to the storm's conoid? Both the anterior focal image and the posterior focal image are actually moving towards each other. So the storm's of conoid is becoming smaller. The circle of least confusion is remaining at the same place, but the storm's interval is decreasing and therefore the patient will see clearer than the first JCC uh, that we had put, right? So now in this position, the patient will be actually happy. 
So this is the concept of Sturm's conoid. Whenever we are decreasing the Sturm's interval, the patient will see clearer. Whenever we are increasing the Sturm's interval by putting the JCC, the patient will see blurred image and he will not be happy. Okay, and always he will prefer the position of JCC where he's seeing clearer because at that point the Sturm's interval is decreasing. Now let us see how can we actually discover astigmatism in a patient. Let us consider this patient to actually have myopia of about minus 2 diopters. Now after doing the subjective refraction, we find out that he needs a sphere of minus 2 diopter spherical. Now if this person does not have any cylinder, uh, cylindrical error, what it means is that with minus 2 diopter spherical, we will have the focal point actually onto the retina. That means there is no Sturm's conoid present in this patient who does not have astigmatism, right? So now in front of this patient, if we actually put the Jackson cross cylinder in any orientation, first we'll put it in the 90 and 180 degree orientation. And then again, we will check the 45 degrees and the 135 degree meridian, right? So when we are going to put it in these orientations, we will find that the patient will have no difference in the vision. That means he will see clearly in uh, whether it is horizontally placed or vertically placed or the JCC is placed obliquely also. So when the patient is not having any difference or any preference of the JCC position, it means that he, the image is on to the retina and there is no astigmatism that we need to correct, right? However, if there was a patient who actually had astigmatism like this patient, so in in case of this patient, if we are going to introduce the JCC in front of this eye, okay, what will happen is that either the Sturm's conoid will decrease in uh, its interval or in one position it will be increased in its interval, right? So as I have explained to you in the concept of JCC, right? So the patient is going to now prefer the position of JCC in which the two images at the two focal points are actually going to move towards each other and the interval will decrease. Okay. And he will be very unhappy with the position in which the Sturm's interval is actually increasing because the images are going away from each other. Right. So in such a case, whenever we have done a spherical correction, we are going to check by putting the Sturm's conoid in uh, the two principal meridians that is vertical and horizontal and then we are going to check two oblique meridians that is 35 and 145 degrees right sorry 45 and 135 degrees right and if the patient has preference for one meridian it tells us that there is astigmatism present because the, the, the JCC is actually altering the Sturm's conoid into after we have discovered that the astigmatism is present in the person now we are going to refine the axis. Always remember that the axis is refined first before refining the power, right? So in this case, first we will put the cylindrical lens which we discovered during the retinoscopy in the trial frame on the spherical lens. Now we are going to occlude one eye and ask the patient to focus on the line that is clearest with the other eye. And now we are going to hold the JCC with the handle parallel to the axis of the cylinder in the frame. So what I mean to say is that if we discovered that suppose this was the prescription one diopter spherical and minus one cylinder at 90 degrees. So the axis of the cylinder is 90 and therefore our JCC also we are going to place in such a way that the handle is actually parallel to the axis of the cylinder that we are going to put. Okay, so this will be our position one. Now we are going to flip it to the another position and ask the patient for this for his preference of images. If there is no difference between the two positions, that is position one and position two, it means that the axis of the corrective cylinder that we have chosen in the trial frame is correct. Okay, however, if there is visual improvement in one position, it means that there is a need to refine the axis. Now, how do we refine the axis is that we will rotate the minus correcting cylinder in the direction of the minus cylindrical component of the cross cylinder. So what I mean to say is that if this is our correcting cylinder and the axis is 90 and we have placed our Jackson cross cylinder on top of this straddling in such a way that this is the red mark which indicates the minus and this is the white mark which indicates the 
plus cylinder component of the JCC. Now considering that this is actually a minus cylinder that is minus 1 at 90 degree axis. So which component are we going to focus in the JCC? The red component because the red component is the minus component. Now suppose the patient actually uh, prefers this position. We are going to rotate this towards this minus component of the JCC because we are dealing with a minus cylinder. Now let us say this cylinder was actually plus cylinder at 90 degree axis. Then what will you do if the patient is preferring this position? We are going to rotate it towards the white line that is the white component or the plus component of the cross cylinder because we are dealing with a plus correcting cylinder. So the plus collecting cylinder should be rotated in the direction of the plus component that is the white of the cross cylinder. And we have to keep on repeating this test till the neutral point is reached. What is meant by the neutral point? The neutral point means that the patient now no longer has any preference. So what I mean to say is suppose this is the cylinder at 90 degrees is the axis and this is a minus cylinder. First the patient prefers a position so we will rotate it towards the red line. Now again we are going to put the JCC with the handle parallel to this axis where we have put our um, correcting lens. Again, we are going to ask, suppose again he prefers this, again we are going to rotate. Now, suppose he prefers the flip position and the red mark now reaches on to the other side. Now, we are going to rotate it backwards. So, we keep on rotating front and back till we get the neutral point. Let us assume that our patient is actually, after retinoscopy, we find out that this is the uh, prescription that is minus 2 diopter spherical minus 1 cylinder and the axis is at 180 degrees right so what I mean to say is that the axis is at 180 degree that is the horizontal now in order to refine the axis we will be introducing our JCC with the handle parallel to this axis so if this is the handle of the JCC this handle will be oriented parallel to the uh, axis of the cylinder that is 180 degree now what happens is that the two axes of this JCC will now be straddling this axis, okay, the axis that we have to test. So here we are testing 180 degree and we can see that here this is the um, white mark which indicates that this will be the plus component of the JCC and this is a red mark which will be the minus component of the JCC. So what we do is in the first position we will introduce the JCC like this so that the, the red mark okay is present on the right side and this is present on the left side right one very important rule that we have to follow while refining the axis is to take into consideration the sign of the cylinder that we are refining now here we are trying to refine this minus one cylinder right so as we are refining this minus one cylinder we have to take into consideration the minus component of the jcc that is the red component of the jcc so in the position one we can see that the red component is present on the right side of the handle right or we can say on the right side of the 180 degree line 0 and 180 degree meridian right now we are going to flip the cylinder and bring the cylinder bring the jcc into the position two okay and what is the position two we can see that in the position two the red component has now come to the left hand side of the handle right so have a look at this diagram so this is our connecting cylinder that we have introduced and the 180 degree was the axis that we found okay so 180 degree was the axis that we found now in the position one we know that the red component is over here where is it present it is present on the right hand side okay so always if there is a minus cylinder we have to always consider the red component and if we are dealing with a plus cylinder we have to consider the white component of the jcc right now suppose the patient actually prefers right suppose the patient is preferring this position that is position one okay so if the patient prefers the position one we are going to rotate our jcc in such a way that our axis of the cylinder will rotate towards this minus cylinder. So have a look. Okay, so we had our correcting cylinder like this place at 180 degree. Now since the patient is preferring the position 1, 
So we have to consider the red component because it's a minor cylinder. The red component is present towards the right side and therefore we will be rotating our correcting cylinder towards the right side and this is what we get. Now let us consider that the retinoscopic prescription that we get uh, from this retinoscopy is this, right? Now in this case the cylinder is actually a plus cylinder, right? So we need to know where is the plus component of the JCC present in the preferred position. Now in this case the patient is preferring the position 1, right? And because we are dealing with a plus cylinder, we will consider the white mark on the JCC. The white mark is located on the left side of the handle and therefore we will actually rotate our correcting cylinder also towards the left hand side. So this would be our rotation. And why we have rotated it towards the white part because we are dealing with the plus cylinder in this. Now let us assume that the patient actually prefers the position B. Now in the position B of the JCC we can see that the red component is present onto the left side okay or we can say above the handle and the white component which is the plus component is actually present onto the right side of the handle right or below the handle now as we are dealing with the minus cylinder say in this condition where are we going to rotate our jcc we are going to rotate it towards this minus component okay because minus is always rotated towards the left hand uh, towards the red so this is what we are going to get so from from this we have rotated it to this right why the patient was actually using the minus cylinder now suppose in this condition we are actually dealing with a prescription like minus 2 diopter spherical but the cylinder is however a plus cylinder at 180 degree axis and the patient is preferring position B now as the patient is position uh, preferring this position B, where are we supposed to rotate this JCC? We are supposed to rotate it towards the white mark of the JCC. So what are we going to get? We are going to get something like this, right? And since we were dealing with the plus cylinder at 180 degree, we are considering the white mark of the JCC. The white mark in the preferred position is present onto the right side and therefore from the previous position, we have rotated it towards this side. So this table over here actually represents how much rotation we have to do. So if we are dealing with the uh, cylinders of lesser power, usually the amount of rotation that we do is more about 30 degrees, 15 degrees, 10 degrees. And as the cylinder power is going to increase, the amount of rotation is very less about 5, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Also the rotation that we do in each in the initial steps of refinement will be more and later especially when we are going back towards that rotation in the say in the opposite direction usually it will be less let us first go through the steps of refining the power of the cylinder and then with an example i will explain it to you the first step is we are going to put the cylindrical lens that we found in retinoscopy along with the spherical correction in the trial frame then ask the patient to focus on a distant object next is we are going to introduce the JCC. Now, if you would remember from the refinement of the cylinder, the handle of the JCC was actually parallel to the axis of the cylinder, right? So what I mean to say is, if you would remember that trial frame, the axis of the cylinder that we chose was about 180 degrees and the JCC also was introduced in such a way that the handle was actually parallel to the axis such that these axis of the JCC that means the red and the white marks were actually straddling the handle or straddling the axis that we were checking to refine it right however when we are refining the power of the cylinder we have to place the JCC in such a way that the axis of the JCC will be parallel to the axis of the cylinder so what I mean to say is we are going to place it in such a way that if this is the axis of the correcting cylinder 180, our JCC also will be placed in such a way that at least one of the axis, that means either the red mark axis or the white mark axis are, perpendicular, are parallel to that axis of cylinder, okay, or are superimposing with the axis of the cylinder, right? Yeah. The third step is we are going to flip the JCC to see that if there's any preference uh, in the vision seen by the patient, right? So ask the patient about any improvement in the position. 
Then if the patient notices that there is no difference between the two position, the inference is that the power of the correcting cylinder in the trial frame is actually correct. However, if there is visual improvement attained in one position, then we have to give the corresponding correction of the cylinder. And finally, we are also going to adjust the spherical correction in such a way that the least confusion circle does not move away from the retina. Now let us try to refine the power of the collecting, correcting cylinder using the JCC. As already I told you that whenever we are correcting the power of the cylinder, whenever we are refining the power of cylinder using the JCC, it is the axis of the JCC which should be uh, parallel to the axis of correcting cylinder and not the handle. So we can see that in position 1, it is the white marks which are a parallel to the 180 degree meridian and in position 2, it is the red marks which are parallel to the 180 meridians and let me remind you that the plus marks indicate the axis of the plus cylinder of the JCC and the minus marks indicate the axis of the minus cylinder of the JCC and their power will be acting perpendicular to their axis. Now let us consider this position 1. In this position 1, we can see that the retinoscopy that we found for this patient was minus 1 diopter spherical minus 0.75 cylinder at 180 degree. So our axis was at 180 degree. Now at this axis of 180 degree, the plus component of the JCC is present that means the white marks and therefore the plus 1 cylinder is acting at the vertical meridian and the minus 1 is acting at the horizontal meridian. Similarly, for position 2, we can see that the red marks are however aligned to the 180 degree axis and therefore the minus uh, component of the JCC is acting along the vertical meridian and the plus component is actually acting along the horizontal meridian. Now, let us understand the position 1 and position 2 in more depth using these terms conoid. Our patient over here who was having minus 1 diopter spherical and minus 0.75 cylinder at 180 degree actually is having compound myopic astigmatism. Compound myopic astigmatism means that both the images that the anterior focal point and the posterior focal point as shown over here, they are formed in front of the retina, right? Now, the first image that we see over here in red is actually being formed from the vertical meridian. Now when we are going to introduce this JCC and the power cross of the JCC is shown here, along the vertical meridian what power are we giving? We are giving about plus 1 diopter. So plus 1 diopter will do what? It will actually shift the image more anteriorly, right? Because plus means adding more power, more convergence to the vertical rays and they will converge even more ahead and therefore the image will move somewhere here, right? Now what are we doing to the horizontal meridian? To the horizontal meridian we are adding minus 1 diopter, right? That means we are making it more weaker. So this image which is formed by the convergence of the horizontal rays will now move even more behind, right? So image will be formed here. So what is exactly happening in this case? The Sturm's interval is increasing. Now because the Sturm's interval will increase, the patient will not be happy with this position 1. Now let us see that what happens in position 2. In position 2, it is the minus marks which are present uh, parallel to the 180 degrees. That means along the vertical meridian, we are having the minus power, right? And along the horizontal, we have the plus power of the JCC. Now in the same patient who is having the simple myopic astigmatism, what are we giving along the vertical meridian? We are giving the minus power. Okay, that is a minus 1 diopter. So what will happen to this image which is formed from the vertical meridian? This image will be pushed behind. Okay, now what are we giving to the horizontal meridian? To the horizontal meridian, we are giving plus 1 diopter, right? So that horizontal rays will shift, will act on the image which is formed from the horizontal meridian, right, which is this image. As we are giving plus 1 diopter to this, what will happen? The image will be formed in front, okay, it will be formed more ahead because the convergence of the horizontal we are increasing. So what is happening in turn? Both the images are actually moving towards each other and the Sturm's conoid is becoming smaller and smaller 
and therefore the patient will be now happy so what do you think which position the patient is going to prefer the patient would be preferring position 2 right so this is the funda of refinement of the power we give patients two positions of the jcc in one position we move the images away from each other and increase the sterms interval in the second position we will actually be decreasing the sterms interval and the patient will prefer that position right so the position and the jcc that the patient accepts will be this one right now that we know that patient is actually accepting the position b let us see how do we adjust this prescription according to the position b now in the position b we know the power cross that we got was minus 1 diopter and plus 1 diopter okay along the horizontal and minus 1 was along the vertical right so now what do we do is that since the cylinder over here the axis is 180 the power is acting along the vertical meridian so we are going to take this vertical meridian power and add algebraically to this that means 0 0.75 diopter cylinder plus minus 1 diopter cylinder from the jcc okay and the axis will remain the same that is 180 so what do we get we will get minus 1.75 cylinder at 180 degrees right now this was the correction for our cylinder but what will happen to our spherical component okay what will happen to the spherical component now i already told you before that the sphere in the jcc is actually opposite sign and half of the cylinder so what cylinder are we adding here we are adding minus one diopter cylinder right and what is the uh, what will be half of that cylinder it will be minus 0 0.5 right so the same minus 0 0.5 we are going to add here but with the opposite sign okay so it will become plus so the sphere that we get is minus 1 diopter spherical plus 0 0.5 that means it will come to about minus 0 0.5 diopter spherical and the cylinder is our minus 1.75 cylinder at 180 degree so this is going to be our final prescription so remember that whenever we get a preferred position that particular meridian along which the correcting cylinder is acting to that meridian algebraically we have to add the power of the jcc along that meridian and then we have to carefully adjust the sphere also according to this relationship so that our least circle of least confusion does not move from the retina right so after our final refinement the prescription that we get is this so this was it about the JCC. I hope it was clear and you finally understood how to discover astigmatism, how to refine the axis of cylinder and how to refine the power of cylinder in a JCC. Thank you and have a nice day. If you like the videos, kindly spread the knowledge.